Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're getting real, real about what do you wear when you go for a run, and I'm super glad that you're here. So I actually have a close friend that is just beginning her running journey, and as happens with almost every woman that I know when she first starts running, especially if you're like me and you didn't start running until later in life. You know, maybe you ran track in high school or something like that, but for me, I had never run until I was 39 years old. And I clearly remember one of my biggest concerns being, what am I supposed to wear? And whether you're running outside in your neighborhood, which it took me a minute to feel confident enough to run outside in my neighborhood, I'm just being real, or if you're going to the gym to run, you're probably one wondering what's appropriate. Now, I want to say at the outset that really you can wear anything you want to run. Don't worry about what other people think of you. You run in what you feel comfortable. What I'm going to share with you today is what I wear when I run and where I think you should spend your money when you're first developing kind of a running kit and where I think you can actually save a lot of money and don't need to go crazy. So let's get started. So I'm gonna insert a picture right here of a typical running kit for me. And as you look at this picture, you'll see that it's very, very basic. We have, first of all, let's go from head to toe. We have a visor to protect our face from sun damage, from UV rays, from wrinkles, from all of those kinds of things. If you're like me and you have color-treated hair, you may wanna make this a hat instead of a visor because as you probably know, the sun is horrible for our hair color, so that's the number one thing I'm always considering. But the other big reason to have something on your head, especially in the summer, is to keep the sweat from rolling off of your face and into your eyes. That is actually not super fun. I run here in Georgia. I don't know where you live, but uh, here you're going to want to keep the sweat out of your eyes. So at the very least, you're going to want some kind of a headband. I prefer something with a brim and again that will cover my hair color. So the second thing we're going to consider since we're going head to toe is sunscreen. Now I am the first to admit that I am not very good about putting sunscreen on my arms and my legs and I really should be better about it. It's one of the most common places for cancerous moles on women are this part of our arms and the backs of our legs. So you definitely want to be wearing sunscreen not only on your face but anywhere else that might be uncovered. And this is obviously because we don't want to get skin cancer. We don't want to age prematurely. Uh, I have had periods in my life where I'm really good about this and periods in my life where I am not so good about this. So definitely wear your sunscreen. And I recommend that you wear a sunscreen that is sweat proof because you really don't want sunscreen, again, running into your eyes. Everything that I'm going to talk about today is in my Amazon storefront. Uh, so you can go to that link below if you want to know where to buy any of the products that I'm going to talk about. So then let's talk about the girls. Uh, it is very important, women, that you have a good, supportive sports bra. I know that some of you, you know, we're all different sizes. This is going to be more important for some of you, less important for others, but this is an area where I want to see you spend some money. If you're an A or a B cup, you probably could go just with a, you know, a sports bra from Target. If you're a C cup and above, I would want to see you go to an actual running store and get fitted for a running bra. Running bras are just like anything else. It really is going to be different for every person. Sizing can be different across brands. So it's really important. I would definitely invest here. I would definitely spend some money on your running bra because uh, what I do is I spend a little bit more money. I typically have about three that are in rotation. They get washed so frequently that I really want them to be a good quality material. And what you don't want is to buy one that's less expensive, that you know, two or three months into your running journey, you're already noticing it's losing elasticity. So you definitely want to get a good, high quality running bra. Uh, I love the running bras from Skirt Sports. I used to be a brand ambassador for them. I'm not any longer, but I know a lot of people have discount codes out there. So definitely look around for a discount code for Skirt Sports, but I love their running bras. 
So the next thing is, of course, what are you gonna wear on your top? Now, this is one area where I feel like you can spend a lot less money. Uh, don't go crazy here. The one thing is don't wear cotton because cotton will not breathe and you really want uh, a fabric that's gonna breathe, especially in the summer, but really any time of the year. Cotton will just hold that sweat and it will get very, very heavy. So you want a tech fabric. Um, the shirt that I'm showing you here, I'm gonna try to find the link for it. It is my favorite summer running shirt. It's actually a very thin, high-tech fabric and I almost feel like I'm not wearing anything. Some of you feel comfortable running in just a sports bra. I wish that I did, quite honestly, especially in the summertime. I don't. I get very self-conscious when I do that, so I do always wear a shirt. Uh, this shirt that I'm wearing today is from Skirt Sports, so you could go with a tank top. These get a little bit more on the pricey side, so especially when you're first starting out, don't spend a lot of money on your shirt. Go to TJ Maxx, go to Marshalls, get it at Target, um, get it at Walmart, buy something on the less expensive side, but do have it be a good tech fabric. I've been very impressed in the last few years. Target and Walmart have really upped their game on their athletic wear, so definitely check those places, um, and especially sometimes the sale racks. I'm not when I run a race, I like to look super cute, but I'm not super particular about what I'm wearing if I'm just running in my neighborhood. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And this is a place where you're obviously going to have to wash these frequently. So buy a lot. Try to buy them less expensively and buy a lot of them because there's nothing worse than trying to go for a run and realizing that you don't have anything clean. So definitely buy a lot of shirts. And then moving on to our bottoms. Now, this is a very big deal to me. Um, there are some of you that are watching this that um, maybe you don't have a lot of... Um how do I put this? Maybe you don't carry your weight in the bottom half of your body. I am a pear through and through. I am a proud pear. I have carried my weight in my thighs and my bottom half my entire life. In fact, when I was a ballet dancer when I was young, I was criticized for that when I was about 13 years old, and I think I weighed all of 95 pounds. So this is not a weight issue. This is just how your body is built. That whole thigh gap thing is a crock of you know what? So ignore that altogether. But if you carry your weight in your thighs and if you have bigger thighs, which the more that I have become a runner, I actually have, um, I have substantial thighs and I'm not going to apologize for it. They're very strong, but I also tend to get a lot of chafing in my thighs and most running shorts will ride up on me. So for me, it's got to be all compression shorts all the time. Um, I'll show you in a minute. I'll stand up and, or maybe I'll take a picture of what I'm wearing, but I'm actually wearing capris today because I'm going to be running on the treadmill. I have to have a compression, a compression short that goes down um, almost, not quite to my knees, but you're going to want to look for a longer compression short if that's an issue for you and if you don't want them to ride up. Um, I use, uh, if I'm running in a really humid climate, I will typically be in capris, which I know you're like, aren't you hot? Well, yes, but I cannot keep enough body glide on my thighs to keep me from ch uh, chafing if it's a super, super humid climate. So a lot of times, I'll wear capris even in the summer, but any pair of good compression shorts will work for you. I like ones with pockets. The ones that are in this picture are from Athleta. They have a nice deep pocket that will fit your phone. Athleta has some great running short options. I don't think I own one pair of like traditional running shorts. All of my running shorts are either compression shorts or compression shorts with a little skirt over them. Um, you can find those at um, skirtsports.com. Uh, there's a couple of other companies that make them. Really all of the brands are starting to make a skirt option. And especially when I first started, I was a little more self-conscious. I liked having a little bit of a skirt instead of just wearing compression shorts. So that's really more of a, you know, however you feel comfortable. But for me, I'm definitely going with a compression short with a pocket that will fit my phone. And the more pockets, the better, especially as you continue on your running journey. For those of you that are training for maybe Princess Half or one of the marathon weekend races, you want to make sure that you can carry like onboard nutrition. You want to be able to carry your driver's license, maybe your key fob if you run at a park. So for me, uh, shorts with pockets and skirts that have pockets are super, super important. 
Okay, what's next? Let's move on to your feet. Now, obviously, your feet are incredibly important if you are a runner and if you want to be running over the long haul. I always say I run like a little old lady because I want to still be running when I'm a little old lady. So if you're in this for the long haul, you have to take care of your feet. So I don't want you to just run in those same shoes that you've been wearing to the gym forever or that you wear to walk your dog. I want you to actually go to a running store and every running store that is any good loves new runners. You guys are literally their bread and butter. And not only that, but in my experience, most people that work at running stores are there because of the discount. Now I'm not talking about big box stores. I'm talking about running specific stores. My favorite here in Atlanta is Big Peach. Absolutely love them. If you go in there and you say to them, um, and my friend Megan that works at Big Peach would back me up on this all day long, I am just beginning my running journey, help. <laughs> <laughs> they will not look at you like you are stupid. They will not treat you like a fool. If they do, walk out the door. They will be so kind and so welcoming to you. And what they're going to do is actually, if they're good, they're going to ask you to run. They want to see your gait. Some of them will have a treadmill that they will put you on. They want to see how your foot moves when you run. And then they're going to start making some recommendations. Now, definitely don't take this as gospel. Go by what feels good on your feet. But I highly Rec I cannot recommend enough. Go to a running specific store and get fitted for your first pair of running shoes. This can take a little bit of trial and error. I'm currently wearing the um, Ultra Running. I think these are called Escalade or something like that. Escante, sorry. I'm currently wearing Ultra Running Escante. Absolutely love them. They're not for everybody. And that's a super important note. Just because your best friend does really well with this particular brand or, or you know, you saw this guy on YouTube who does this particular brand, that does not mean that that is the right running shoe for you. So go, can I say that one more time? Go to a running specific store, get fitted for a running shoe. Now, a place where I do think you can get away with not spending a lot of money, especially in the beginning of your running journey, is on your socks. Now, um, there's, there's different schools of thought on this, and certainly once you get into longer runs, you may want to invest in a more expensive pair of socks. The ones that I have here are on the pricier side. Um, there are a few brands that I really love for socks. Uh, Belega is a really good brand. Um, I'll put in the Amazon storefront several of the different brands that I like. But really for me, um, those only become important once you get into longer mileage runs. If you're only doing two or three miles, two to three times a week. You can absolutely go to your Costco. I like the Puma. Uh, they usually have a value pack. Uh, you want to have a lot of socks because especially in the summer, this is one of those things they're, they're you're going to have to wash them frequently and you want to make sure you have plenty. Uh, full disclaimer, when and if you do get to the point where you're buying more expensive socks, hide them from your children. Uh, running socks for some reason around here, even if they're pink, my boys tend to steal them. So I keep my running socks almost under lock and key in my closet because those puppies can be $15 a pair. So if you get to the point where you're doing like marathon training, then socks actually become extremely important because that's when we're worried about blisters and things like that. And uh, But in the beginning of your running journey, really any socks that you have are fine. Um, do try to stay away from 100% cotton because again, those won't wick moisture as well. So any athletic sock from a big box store will do absolutely fine for you. So lastly, you may be wondering about um, headphones and music. Now, what I use, is the Trex Titanium. Now how those work, and I'll insert a picture right here of me actually wearing those. They don't go in your ear, they actually rest on your jawbone. I started using those a few years ago. Where I run, there is some traffic, and being able to hear, uh, you know, if a dog is running up, if another runner is running up, if there's a car is extremely important to me. So not having anything actually in my ear is good for safety, but also I find that any kind of earbud, even when I'm on the treadmill, uh, it hurts my ears. I have very small ears and the any earbud in my ear just hurts. So having them out on the outside makes a huge difference. These, um, they don't bounce around. I have the regular size. If I were to purchase them again, I would probably do the minis. Um, and I'll link them again in the Amazon storefront if you're interested. Uh, I find that they last 
I mean, I charge them once a week. It's a Bluetooth headphone, so there's no wires. Uh, so it, I don't really know how long it would last. I know it lasts at least a week because I just have this habit where every night before my, whenever my long run is gonna be, I plug them in and charge them. But um, really great sound quality and I absolutely love them. I hope this was helpful. It was um, definitely running 101, but I've heard from so many of you that are just starting your running journey and I am so proud of you. You are doing such an amazing job. Remember that Rome wasn't built in a day. This is a long-term process. And I'll just tell you in closing the story of when I ran my first mile without stopping. I was 39 years old. I was dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety, both with my dad being ill and my kids being crazed and everything in my life, my husband traveling. I was not managing my stress well. I was feeling very depressed. I'll put a link right here to my story about more about my running journey and especially about depression. And it took me three months to be able to run one mile without stopping. And I still to this day remember when I was able to accomplish that, it has meant more to me than any finish line that I've ever crossed. And this journey with running has absolutely transformed my life. It's transformed my health. It's transformed my mind. And I hope that that is your experience as well. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you want to join me, I have Run Day Monday videos fairly regularly, not always every Monday, but I do talk about Run Disney quite a lot. I'm currently training for the Walt Disney World uh, 10K in January. Then I'll be doing the Princess Half Marathon in February and also the Star Wars Half Marathon in April. So if you'll be there for any of those race weekends, I hope to see you there. I hope you're doing well. Happy running and be good to each other. Bye-bye.